Welcome to a new session of tutorials on using Graphics 2.0 in Corona. Today we're going to focus on how to do circles and make it look 2.5D. If you've been following Corona at all for any length of time, you'll be aware that Corona has recently upgraded the graphics engine to be 2.0 and that gives us all kinds of new capabilities. Most especially we're now able to do 3D like or really 2.5D graphics in our applications. So let's get started. What I wanted to do for a game that I have been working on is be able to do it in 2.5D in Corona. Now to be able to do this game I also wanted to be able to show area of effect for certain kinds of explosions or attacks or things like that in, inside the game engine. To get this to work correctly I wanted to be able to create a new circle inside the game environment. Well I when I went to try and do a new circle and put that in a 2.5D I ran into some problems. But Let's start a little bit further back. If I wanted to do a square inside of a environment and make it look 2.5D it's fairly straightforward and, and this is using the vector images so I can create a square very easily and make it look like it has folded back on itself and is now 2.5D with this edge appearing to be closer to me than the distant edge. I wanted to do the exact same thing with a circle. Unfortunately a circle does not work inside the environment. So here's my circle. I have drawn it as a vector object giving it a radius of 100 and as you can see I tried to do the same transform to it as what I did with the rectangle and I get squat. This is because the vector circle object only has a radius. It does not actually have the uh, additional paths or components that are necessary to be able to ro rotate it. So if we're going to work with it, well, let's, let's go back and take a look at our, at our square. So when I was doing the square I, I just simply created a square as a new rectangle, had it located in the center of my display, and I gave it a width and height of 200. Then over a time of two seconds I changed the, the path, and this can be just as easily a square as it is a circle. I changed the path for the square object so that it is minor, has some minor alterations to that path to give it that 2.5D look. So again, here's my square. As you can see, it rotates and looks like it has become 2.5D. It doesn't actually rotate at all inside the environment. What Graphics 2.0 is able to do is it looks at paths around the square object and is able to modify them. Now the path is based upon a right-hand algorithm or right-hand rotation of graphics. And if you've ever worked with 3D modeling or 3D graphics before, you've probably heard of the right-hand rule. Um, it, it's actually derived from physics with how to work with um, electricity and how magnetism comes off of it. But we also apply that to 3D vectors and how we draw those on 2D paper. Well, since your screen is actually 2D, we're working with 3D vectors and making it look like it they have depth. And that's basically what the path is allowing me to do. The top left-hand corner is has a path of x1, y1. The bottom left-hand corner is x2, y2. The bottom right hand corner is x3, y3, and the top right hand corner is x4, y4. Now if you hold your right hand out in front of you, point your thumb towards your face, and ball your hand up into a fist, fingers are pointing in this exact same rotation. x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, x4, y4. This is what's known as the right hand rule or right hand notation when working with 2.5D or 3D vectors. So this gives us the idea that if I adjust x1, y1, x4, y4 and actually bring them in and pull them down just a little bit and pull x2, y2 and x3, y3 out a little bit and up. So x3, y3 would come out and up, x2, y2 out and up, x1, y1 in and down, x4, y4 in and down that gives it the perspective that it is three-dimensional or two and a half D. Now we can also quite often uh, two and a half D also utilizes additional movements. Um, sometimes the perspective is skewed to the right, sometimes it's skewed to the left, or skewed straight back. This is also sometimes known as an isometric layout 
to give it that 2.5D look. And a uh, few famous games that have used that in the past would include like Ages of Empires or Ages of Mythology by Microsoft. Um, the original Warcraft series was all 2.5D, uh, Command and Conquer. Many games have used this 2.5D concept for being able to show it. Now we're able to do these exact same type of games with the Graphics 2.0 utilizing Corona. However, as I mentioned, you cannot do it with a vector-based circle. So what we need to do instead is create a circle that is bit-based, be able to import that and make that look like a vector-based circle. So what I chose to do to give that same appearance is that I went into GIMP and I just simply created a cir simple circle uh, with a transparent background and made it 100 pixels in radius so or actually 100 pixels in in diameter so that it could easily be scaled for whatever I wanted to do inside of my game. I saved it as a circle.png file and placed it inside my folder so that then I could use it. So with a little code modification so instead of using my vector-based objects, the square or the rectangle. And by the way, if you want to use a square or a rounded square, those work great. You just simply cannot use a circle if you're wanting in your 2.5D object if you're wanting to give it a 2.5D perspective code-wise. So with my circle, I went in and loaded my circle as a new image, set it center of my screen, and I wanted to give it a slightly faded look. If you've played any of the 2.5D games, when you select an object and you're going to use firing or explosions or something like that, quite often they'll give you a radius of uh, targeting or radius of effect. So I wanted to give that a faded look so that I could place another object under it or on top of it and it wouldn't block everything else out. So I went ahead and set the alpha to 8 and I went ahead and scaled the object up as well uh, just to give it a, a little better appearance. Now we're going to do our same transition that we've done previously. It does need to be a circle instead of a square. And let's run this. And as you can see it completely faded from screen. Let's adjust it just a little bit. And the reason why it faded completely from screen is that basically I've just got too much of an adjustment going on. It is, um, while it is a hundred pixels, if I'm changing, pulling this, changing the X one, Y one by 50 pixels, that's moving it down 50 pixels and over 50 pixels. X two, Y two is moving up and over 50 pixels in a negative direction. Same with X three, Y three up or over 50 pixels and up 50 pixels. And X four, Y four down 50 pixels or to the left 50 pixels and down 50 pixels. Well obviously that's too much if I've got a radius of 100 so I need to drop those down probably to usually for isometric they say somewhere between 33 and 45 percent is going to be your target amount. Of course we could throw variables in there to make that calculation a lot easier, make our life a lot easier, but since I am just simply doing a quick so we're going to just simply adjust these down to, let's try 20% of, of our original value, of, of our 100 value, instead of 50%. So I've changed my values to 20, which will be 20% variation from the original 100 pixel size of the object. And let's go ahead and give that a try. And as you can see, that looks pretty good. It's not quite isometric in appearance, but it does give the, it shows that it can be done with a circle. Now usually we shoot for somewhere between 33% and 45% to give a true isometric appearance to an object. So what we could do is go in and make this a, uh, a variable calculation, which would make everything much easier. So let's try that. So we're going to set up some variables to handle what the value of this should be. And we can do that very easily. Uh, we can set just our width and our height. So we'll set width for w equal to the circle's width and the height equal to the circle's height. Now of course these will each be, should be 100. Now like I said we want somewhere between 33 and 45 percent to make it isometric. So let's take that value and go ahead and multiply it times 0.33 to make our calculations very easy for this. And then we just simply need to go in and replace all the numbers that we've got in here with our width and our height, leaving the negative signs. Anything that's an X is of course going across, so that's gonna be width. Anything that's a Y will deal with the height. Okay, and let's see how that works. 
And as you can see, that looks very a great deal more isometric. We could go ahead and tweak it some more if we wanted to go up to the right, which is typically what you see for most isometric games, but going straight back also works very nicely. So there's a nice quick little tutorial on how to do simple 2.5D calculations for your objects. Of course, once you've got a height and width setting, you could easily go in and do this to each of your objects height and width and have it automatically, have Corona do all the heavy lifting for you to do your calculation to make it look like it has, it is an isometric or 2.5D object. Hope you found all of this helpful. Again, this is Dr. Brian Burton. I've been working with Corona now since a long time, since uh, 2009. So uh, if you're interested in any of our books on Corona game development, and we also have several on Unity, please check out our website. Thank you.